Hello and welcome to the 15th GPCA Annual Forum. My name is Elsweed al Bassam. I'm a research specialist at GPCA and I'm the chair of the new upcoming initiative, the GPCA Youth Committee. With me today is a very special guest, Diet Morris Deersdofer, Managing Director of Siemens Energy Middle East and the UAE. Mr. Diet Moore, welcome and thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be with you today. It's a great pleasure to be here at this forum, uh, and I think we are looking uh, ahead to, to exciting discussions uh, during the forum. I think um, it's great for everybody to finally connect and put faces to the names after you know being um, on a virtual platform for a very long time. Now, if you'd allow me, I'd like to start off with the questions, please. Um, given your experience and the fact that hi the hydrogen topic has been gaining a lot of momentum um, across the world, in your view, what are some of the key enablers to harness the potential of hydrogen in the development of the GCC region? I think, the, first of all, the GCC region and the UAE also in particular, but also Saudi Arabia and others, we are blessed with having uh, abundant resources of renewable energy. Uh, so that's a good ingredient and one of the key elements of, of, of costs of green hydrogen and decarbonizing the industry is, is supply of, of uh, renewable energy. Uh, but having said that, we also need to develop the processes and we need to develop how do we, what do we want to do with it. So how do we do sector coupling, how do we generate green hydrogen, how do we, in what form we transport it to the market. Uh, the region is perfectly located between Europe, Asia and, and the US markets and Latin American markets so we can ship the products around. We have also the, t the, the infrastructure here already built uh, due to the hydro hydrocarbons that we have. So we have the shipping industry, we have the transportation, the refining capacities uh, in order to do stuff. So the region is perfectly geared up to, to, to go for this uh, green technologies and this green hydrogen uh, uh, products in the future. What we need to do is we need to work together as an industry to make it happen because it's a holistic view that we need to take on, on the whole topic. It's something where uh, not one player can do all. We need to look in how do we generate the green hydrogen, how do we optimize the system from the renewable supply of electricity to the green hydrogen, how do we couple it now into, uh, into products where we make liquids. For example, we have uh, in Abu Dhabi a plant which we are just designing together with Mustar, Lufthansa, Etihad uh, uh, and other partners to, to build synthetic aviation fuel. Uh, we are working at the on the engineering to build such a plant and, and to integrate it holistically because it's very important that we redefine also how we do these things. And that's, that's important that we show that off. Once done this, then we need to scale up. Why do we need to scale up and why do we do it not in, in one shot and build everything big? Uh, we believe that at the end of the day we need to give also the industry the chance to scale up these technologies. Uh, we have seen it in the solar industry, when you look 20 years, 25 years back, uh, everybody said solar will not be competitive. Solar is today the most comp one of the most competitive uh, energy forms in the world. This has only happened because the industry also developed the technologies, made it cheaper, how to implement it, and, and all these things uh, were happening over a decade of time. And that's maybe also what we see now in the hydrogen industry, that we need to give the industry this, this, this half a decade, decade, to develop all these technologies, scale up, and then and then do the things. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Dietmar. Um, I think you've uh, shed some important points about the geographical location about of the region and also on the natural resources as well. I think that gives the region leverage um, over um, over the rest of the world when it comes to um, moving forward when it comes to the hydrogen um, the hydrogen platform. Um, now, in your view, can you talk us through some of the ways? in which renewable hydrogen will support the decarbonization of the industry value chain. Um, maybe give us also some examples um, from other parts of the world, maybe shedding light on that. Yeah. Very good, very good point. I mean, at the end of the day, it starts also with how to generate the green hydrogen. And we are here today in Dubai and uh, we have a demonstrator plant, which we started some years ago in, uh, in form of our commitment to, to Expo 2020 Dubai where we uh, built a demonstrator plant to generate green hydrogen. It's just a few miles here away from, from uh, Dubai's uh, center. And you can see there how green hydrogen is made. And it gives us a lot of operating experience. 
uh, having now this green hydrogen, now we can use this green hydrogen to put it, for example, into buses or into cars. So actually there is a tender out from, from, from uh, uh, the, the participants to use this green hydrogen now in, in cars and, in, and, and fuel it into uh, buses. That's the first application of what can be done here in the region where we show how it works. We have the, the demonstrator plant that I talked about in Abu Dhabi where we are looking into synthetic aviation fuel. Why synthetic aviation fuel? Uh, synthetic aviation uh, fuel can make, can decarbonize the, the aviation industry because by no way we can fly electric uh, long distances in, in the future. At least that, that's an agreement that all aviation experts have. So we need to find another form how to, to bring uh, long distances from, from Dubai, for example, to Australia or to the US in place. And there synthetic aviation fuel can play a huge role. When you go into an industry like uh, the automotive industry, we are building at the moment in, in uh, Latin America and Chile uh, a phase zero plant where we have um, a plant that generates out of wind energy uh, uh, hydrogen. This hydrogen will be converted in a, in a chain then into uh, gasoline. Uh, this is together with Porsche and uh, with Exxon and other partners. And why is Porsche doing that? Porsche wants to decarbonize their fleet because they will create uh, in the next phase uh, a, a bigger plant and then we have a third phase where they produce uh, a large amount of gasoline which helps them to decarbonize their whole fleet of, of cars. So this is driving the decarbonization of a car manufacturer to a large extent. And uh, we see similar examples now in petrochemical, in steel industry. We see that happening here in Dubai, for example, again in EGA. EGA uh, is a big aluminium uh, uh, smelter company and they are producing aluminium also for the car manufacturing industry. And they also need to give their customers, the automotive industry, for example, uh, a, a, a destiny and say, how do we help you to decarbonize uh, uh, how to build a car? And, 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 and EGA has built now a new plant where they uh, use uh, very efficient gas turbines, replace uh, six, uh, uh, five or six old plants with that and uh, reduce their greenhouse gas emissions by 10%. Yeah. Uh, similarly, they use solar energy from the solar park. The next step will be they will for sure also use hydrogen in their network to um, burn uh, that hydrogen in the gas turbines to further reduce the greenhouse gas emissions by these things. So there is a lot of examples where we see how we can help to decarbonize industries with hydrogen and with technologies that help to, do the, to manage this transition. Important is for me that we see the energy transition and hydrogen as something that we use to walk in the next 10, the next 10 years to really decarbonize. It's not a switch that you turn on and say, I do know everything with hydrogen and then it will work. That's not how it is. No one in the industry is geared up for that. And, and that's something where we all as a community need to work on now to make this energy transition and the use of, of hydrogen happen uh, in the world. Thank you, Dietmar. I think you've shed some important points about hydrogen and how looking into the future and looking at sustainability, hydrogen will be a driving force when it comes to that. So I think it's, it's an area where a lot of people need to draw their attention to. Um, moving on to the third question and adding on to what we just discussed, is the technology progressing a pace for the development on, of hydrogen on a large commercial scale? And what are some of the key innovations on the market currently that are driving the hydrogen development forward? I mean, first of all, it's the use